What's the difference between a motor and a generator? You may think there's a lot, but really, fundamentally, there's very little. The difference comes from what they're used for, not what they are. Let me explain. In a motor, electrical energy is turned into mechanical work. In a generator, mechanical work is turned into electrical energy. You can have a machine, easily, that does both. Supplied with electricity, it will rotate and do work. Driven mechanically, it will produce electricity. Many power stations are built this way on purpose. They operate as motors at night, pumping water uphill using cheap electricity, and then in the daytime, when electricity is more expensive, the water runs downhill through the pumps and generates power. Here's a simple DC motor. It works because of the interaction between opposing magnetic fields. There's a permanent magnet in the motor and a magnetic field around the conductor bringing power to the motor. The attraction and repulsion between those fields is what makes the motor turn. Think of it this way. There's a static magnetic field between the poles of the permanent magnet in the motor with its lines of force fixed across the air gap. When a loop or coil inserted in that air gap is supplied with current, the current flows with the pole fields in half the circuit and opposite to the pole fields in the other half. Since moving electric current produces a magnetic field, that field, which has a north and south pole, reacts to the static field. It's attracted to the opposite pole and repelled from the like pole. The result is force applied to the looper coil. It moves. Special connections at the power inlet, called a commutator, switch the direction of current flow every half turn to keep the motor rotating. There are many designs of DC motors with different starting and running schemes to meet various work requirements. Okay, quick review. In a DC motor, where does the force to move the rotating parts come from? It's C, right? The field around the rotor is alternately attracted to and repulsed by the field poles of the motor. Of course, our electric system is AC, and so most motors are AC. They're a little different than the simple DC motor we've talked about, and an explanation of the principal types will lead us directly into a discussion of AC generators. A lot of AC motors, the common ones you see driving pumps and other equipment, are induction motors. They work because of the difference in the behavior of AC current versus DC. DC, by name, is direct current. It does not vary. The graph of a DC over time is a straight line, and the magnetic field around a DC current carrying wire also does not vary. It's stationary. AC is completely different. The graph of AC over time constantly varies. The sine wave shows it. What this means is that the magnetic field around an AC carrying conductor also varies. It rises to a peak, falls off to zero, and rises to a peak in the opposite direction. It moves. If AC is supplied to the stationary windings of a motor, there is a moving magnetic field around those windings, rising and falling with whatever number of cycles the generating system is using, usually 50 or 60 cycles per second. Now, if you place a conducting loop in proximity to that moving field, Voltage is induced in the conductor, current flows in the loop, and a magnetic field appears around it. It reacts to the field in the windings, and a force is applied. If the loop is wound properly and mounted on a shaft, you have an AC induction motor, so named because voltage is induced in the rotor by the action of the magnetic field around the stator. Here's the key to these motors. The force applied to the rotating part, the rotor, depends on the relative motion between the two magnetic fields. So when the rotor is stopped, 
there is maximum difference and a large force is applied to the rotor. As the rotor speeds up, the relative motion decreases and the force decreases. Each of these motors, depending on how it is designed, has a specific power or torque curve that can be matched to its intended use. Another quick review. An induction motor works because... I'll give you some time to read through these. It's D. Voltage and its associated current flow is induced in the rotor by the movement of the stator field. A second major group of AC motors is called synchronous and they operate on a slightly different principle. In three-phase synchronous motors, each of the coils in the stator is connected to its own phase in the three-phase electrical grid. A rotating magnetic field is produced because each set of windings is energized 120 degrees apart from the others so the magnetic effect appears to rotate. Direct current is applied to the rotor windings and a fixed magnetic field is produced. Unlike the induction motor, where the fields opposed one another, in this motor the two magnetic fields lock to each other, causing the rotor to rotate at the same speed as the rotating magnetic field. If a load is applied to the rotor shaft, the rotor will momentarily fall behind the rotating field, but will continue to rotate at the same synchronous speed, which is where these motors get their name. The falling behind is like the rotor being tied to the rotating field with rubber bands. Let's slow things down so we can look at this. I'll move the stator in this example, but of course in reality it's the field that's moving around the stator. But since you can't see a magnetic field, let's suspend reality for a moment and imagine that the stator moves. So, the field starts to rotate. If the rotor is connected to a load, the load has inertia. It doesn't want to move. The magnetic connection between the rotor and the stator stretches. The stator is trying to pull the rotor. As the angle between the two increases, more power flows into the stator coils increasing the strength of its magnetic field and it pulls harder on the rotor. Review time. So in a synchronous AC motor, which of these happens? Yep, it's B. In a synchronous motor, the two fields are locked together magnetically and rotate as one. Now let's turn our attention to generators, specifically three-phase synchronous generators, or alternators as they are technically called, the kind of generators most commonly used in power systems. They are very similar to synchronous motors, minus the winding tricks motors use to get up to speed, because generators are driven up to speed by a prime mover, a steam, water, or wind turbine. In the case of a generator, DC is applied to the rotor, creating a static magnetic field around it. But, because the rotor is turning, driven by the prime mover, the magnetic field does move and sweeps through the windings in the stator, inducing voltage in them. The stator windings are connected to the system and load is supplied. Let's take a closer look at the interaction. Recall that in a synchronous motor, we said that the connection between the stator and the rotor magnetic fields was stretchy, like a rubber band. The system essentially drags the rotor around, but all within the same cycle. As a generator, it's the prime mover doing the stretching. The machine is dragging the system. The more power applied to the rotor from the prime mover, the further ahead the rotor field moves relative to the system field and the more current flows. 
back off on the prime mover and the rotor falls back close to the system. Back off on the prime mover completely and the system takes over, supplies power to the rotor and drags it around, essentially turning the generator into a motor. Another review. In a synchronous generator, which of these happens? Yes, it's A. The rotor drags the system. Another feature of the AC generator comes from controlling the field. As we said, DC is supplied to the rotor to create the magnetic field that induces voltage in the stator. That DC supply is manipulated by the generator's excitation system to control voltage. Increase current flow to the rotor and generator voltage increases. The stronger magnetic field induces higher voltage. An equally important effect of varying the field strength of the rotor is the control of reactive power. Reactive power, or volt amps reactive, VARs as they are called, is the energy required to create and sustain magnetic fields around all the conductors in the power system and drive the circuit polarity change as the current alternates. Every conductor in the system has a magnetic field that rises and falls around it in step with cycle changes, 50 or 60 times a second. Conductors that are coiled in motors and transformers amplify this effect. As the magnetic field rises and falls around these coils, it induces voltage in them, and the direction of that induced voltage and resulting current flow is opposite to that of the source generator. In essence, some of the energy supplied to the circuit by the generator is used to create the magnetic field, causing it to rise, and then, when the polarity of the circuit changes, the magnetic field collapses, adding the energy back into the circuit, but at the wrong time, in opposition to what the source generator is trying to do. This reactive energy exists only in AC circuits as a constant force, because only AC circuits have constantly changing voltage and current. Every coil in the system, millions of them, acts as a little reactive generator, demanding energy from the circuit to create and sustain the magnetic fields. That energy comes from the source generator and takes away energy that is supplying useful work, watts. The system demands reactive energy and it either has to be supplied by the connected generators in the form of VAR flow or modified by the addition of specialized equipment in the system, capacitors or inductors, depending on the nature of the reactive demand. That's the subject of another video in this series, Reactive Power Primer, also available on my YouTube channel. Watch it to get more detail on reactive control. All right, another review. What do we accomplish by adjusting voltage? Both of these, right? Control voltage and VARs. To summarize, motors and generators share similar components, but are used in opposite ways. Motors turn electricity into mechanical work, and generators turn mechanical work into electricity. Motors can be DC, operating on the principle of opposing magnetic fields, or they can be AC, operating via induction or by locking to or synchronizing with the system. AC generators use a DC excitation system to induce voltage in the stator to supply load and vary the excitation voltage to control voltage and reactive power flow. Wow, that was a lot. You may want to watch the video again or brush up on some of the basic electricity concepts before trying it again. Or maybe I did such a good job of explaining that you got it all. I can hope, can I? Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Bye now.